If you ever need to bulk upload POs or work orders, uh, there's a pretty simple way to do it. On the purchase order page, you'll notice that there will be a bulk import format or template that you can select to download. The same will be on your work orders page. Now, if you're looking to do it all in a consolidated section, go to your bulk import page and select either the PO bulk upload template or work order bulk upload template. I will do the POs for right now. The same things will apply to the work orders. Once you download it, you'll be able to upload or open up a template for updating your PO. So we'll give our PO a number. Activate means is it going to be in draft or not? So yes means to activate it right away. If you select no, it'll keep the PO in draft. Give it a purchase order date. So today is the 27th. Supplier name, you'll always want to pick the same name as your supplier. So I'll go to the vendors and just grab the supplier name. Paste that in there. It's not going to matter whether it's a link or not. You're going to also want to use either your ASIN SKU or FN SKU. I'll just paste in a SKU, the quantity. I'm going to order a thousand of them. If you don't enter in cost per unit, it'll use the default that you have it so stocked. Uh, the same goes with your lead time ID. And the only time it will require an Amazon Marketplace is if you are sending it to FBA directly. And if that's the case, use the two-digit Marketplace, whether it's US, CA, uh, UK, etc. cetera, okay? Um, and if you are looking to build out a different lead time than what is the default for the supplier, what you can do is go to the lead time page and select the lead time ID by simply copying it, going back to the system, entering it in, and now the system will use that lead time ID. If you do have cost per unit, you can enter that in. Like I said, uh, we do accept up to a three digit cost per unit. Now, if you have a lot of purchase orders to enter in, here's the format that you'll wanna use. You'll want to take, let's say there's, think of this as each row is a product. So you'll want to copy the PO number. Activation will be yes. You'll take the date, copy that. Always keep the same date for everything. It's going to be the same supplier name. And then at this juncture, what you're going to change is the SKU, your quantity, if you need to, cost per unit. And if you have multiple shipments, for example, let's say you have an express shipment versus a, uh, like you have air freight versus ocean freight. Let's say these first ones are all using ocean freight, and then you want to use the other ones that are using air freight. You're going to come in and grab a different, uh, let's say, whatever reason, this is a two day lead time. Uh, you would grab that two day lead time, you'd paste that in there. And then now we can grab that and drag that down. And you can update all that different information. And then if you have a new PO, update a new PO number, because now that's going to signify you have a new purchase order and you go through the same process. And you can do this for as many purchase orders as you need, if it's future dated, etc. And once it's done, you will save it. You'll come back to your bulk uh, import export page, scroll to the bottom, and select if it's a PO bulk upload, you would do it there. If it's a work order, you would do it there. Now, something very important in the last step is going to be if you select a lead time with a work order built into it, the system will know that and automatically make the work order you do not need to make the work order. For example, um, if you are on the lead time page and this lead time, for example, you see that it stops here at your warehouse. It will automatically make this work order for you. You do not need to upload that. The only time you need to leverage the work order template is if you are sending things directly out of your warehouse initially. And then at that juncture, you will download the work order template and go through the same process where you can see that the work order template is very similar, where you have a work order number, activate yes or no, a date, warehouse name instead, ASIN, quantity, lead time ID. If you do not use the lead time ID, the system will use, if you don't enter something in there, the system will actually use whatever your transfer time is for that um, 
for that actual ASIN. So if you come in here and you see 15 days, it will use a 15 day transfer time and it will simply chop it in half between, um, I know this technique can't be chopped in half, it'll say eight days are ground freight, seven days are check into Amazon. Now, if you want a specific one or a specific lead time to use, then again, follow the lead time ID, come in here, copy and paste, and go from there. So that is how you can bulk upload purchase orders as well as work orders.